with courtesy from the Pixel Lab, I have now got another VDB file to share with you guys and also a tutorial to show you how to set it up yourself so you can use it in other future projects with other VDBs. This tutorial goes quite in depth on how to quickly set up a material, how to import the VDB file and how to get the proper settings in place and also to eliminate artifacts that might happen when you actually use these VDBs as they are known to cause quite a lot of issues with people when they try and set them up for the scenes. So if if you want to learn how to do what I've just got here on my screen, just stick around and let's have a look. Uh, if you guys want to support the channel, just have a look on Patreon as well. That's where the file is also going to be available for you to download. And I'm going to probably make it available somewhere else as well. So let's begin. Okay, guys, so we're going to start quite quickly and quite easily. Uh, we're going to import the VDB into our file. So we're going to go into our content browser over here and we can actually drop the VDB. Um, so I'm just going to go to my folder where I have it. And this is it over here. Now you can see we have uh, a lot of frames. We have uh, from frame 01 to frame 360, which means this is an animated VDB. We're going to drop that over into Unreal Engine and then an importer will pop up. And in here, we can set the density or the temperature in whatever channel we want. But by default, it's going to put them into the uh, red channel, which is fine. We're going to leave everything as is. If you get any crashes, feel free to change this to 8-bit. If not, just continue as is. I'm just going to press the import button. And once this uh, finishes, importing it and converting it, we'll be able to then create our material to run the VDB. And here we have our VDB loaded up. It says explosions 159. It's a, it's a low resolution. And we're going to have all the frames inside there, 360 frames. Now we need to sample this in our scene. And to do this, we need to use a material. We're going to right click and create a new material. We're going to call this M dot VDB explosion, just for argument's sake. And then we're going to double click it to open it. And I'm going to bring it over into my viewport over here like that. And now we need to start sampling our VDB. So first thing, the first thing we want to do is we want to bring in a sparse um, volume. Type in sparse volume uh, texture object. And we're going to get the texture, well, the sample parameter, sparse volume texture sample parameter over here. And this allows us to like set up whatever sort of VDB we want in this uh, particular slot. So we're going to call this VDB lot maybe something like that now you can see in here we have uv texture and uh level now for the texture normally you'd uh, be able to put a texture over here and uh link it in but this doesn't actually work properly as of yet so what we're going to do is we're going to select the vdb from here and then just press this arrow to add it like that and now it's added this particular node now we need to set up the uvs for this so we're going to actually get the local position node this one here, this material function. And this allows us to sample the local position of the uh, domain sort of thing, the, the capsule, the volume, the whatever you want to call it that contains the VDB itself. And we're going to also look for object local bounds. And once we have that, we will be able to use a subtract node between the minimum bounds of our, uh, basically our, our volume and put that into the B value over here and then we're going to take the local position and put it into the a values so or dividing the local position by the minimum uh, ob object local bounds and then we are also going to add a divide node over here so we're going to divide the subtraction that we did by the extents of the local bounds of the object so we're going to put that in there like that we just try and align these a little bit okay and then this goes all the way into the uv the vdb slot like that there we go. So this is particularly the first bit that we needed to do. Over in here, we have the attributes A and attributes B. And as if you remember, we put the density into attributes A, the red channel. And in the B channel, we did put the temperature. So now we need to basically connect the density over to our uh, extinction. So that's quite, um, that's quite easy. First of all, let's just get a component mask. And this component mask, because we're, we're always trying to mask the, uh, it just allowed the red channel to go through. We're going to deselect the G, B, and A and just have red on. So we can connect attributes A to this. We, we're also going to duplicate it. And we're going to connect B over here. Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way, B going up and A going down, is because A is going to end up, as I've said to you, in the extinction of the material. Uh, by the way, this material does need to be changed to a volume and the blend mode to an additive mode 
and this is where our uh, you know our mask is going to go into but first before we do that we do want to add a density multiplier so we are going to add a multiply node over here and then press s and left click to create a scalar parameter and in here we're going to call this a vdb uh, density with a value default value of one we're going to put that in there uh, sorry like that and then this in here in the a value and then this goes into the extinction now we need to sort out our particular temperature and that's where the next part of the code comes which is again quite simple just a little bit more than what we did for the extinction in order for us to have proper temperature we will need to remap the value range so with that we can actually bring in a remap value range um, option in here and we are going to put these, you know, create four nodes like that and basically connect them to each of these uh, settings. Now, by default, without changing a thing about them, so no extra changes, we can uh, put the default numbers of 0 to 1 and then 0 to 1 over here and, and like this. This is quite basic. You can transform all of these into parameters if you'd like to change the VDB even further. Now, this uh, mask will go into the input over here. We do need to have another multiply node, so we're just going to duplicate this one and connect the result into the A value. And for the B value, we want to add another scalar, um, you know, constant, and we're going to call this temperature uh, multiplier since it's not, you know, it's not actually a density or whatever. So then we're going to put a default value of maybe a hundred on this. And we're going to connect it into the B value. Now, very importantly, you do need to put this multiply into a black body, which is only available for our Unreal Engine 5.3 and above. So we'll put a black body there, and we do want to control this for a parameter as well. So we're going to add another scalar parameter and call it black body um, intensity, maybe something like that. Yeah. And then we'll put this. Uh, we'll put a value of 10 to this, maybe. Um, and then I'm going to add a multiply node and connect all of these in this particular uh, way. And then this goes into our emissive color. Now for the scattering, for the albedo, we're going to create a sort of a scattering color. So we're going to put, uh, you know, hold our uh, button free and left click to create uh, this constant free value and then convert to a parameter. And we're going to call this scattering color, which allows us to control the color of the VDB if we want. Now I would turn this into white if I were you, otherwise we might get some issues and then i'm going to put this into the albedo over here like that and now we can actually apply and this should be our material for now in order for us to get the vdb going now we're going to go back into our level and start you know using the material and the vdb itself so we can actually play back the animation okay let's get going so now we are going to go to the plus button over here and search for hetero genius volume like that and drop into the scene now you can't see anything there it's completely blank but we do have this material slot over here so we can actually drop our material but i'm not going to drop that one i'm going to create a material instance like that and then i'm going to put this into this slot okay now with that done we should be able to see something but we're not at the minute so what we need to do is we need to actually get this to start playing the animation and you can see in here it has frame frame rate, uh, end frame, you know, so we, we can cl uh, click the playing button and then we can click the looping button. So we are getting this animation playing time and time again. Now, let me just lift it a bit higher into the scene like that. And we'll see what happens when this starts from the beginning. So you'll notice this is what the effect looks like. Now you will notice that it's a, it's actually a bit, it's a, you know, this is another problem with VDBs when you import them. This is actually the way this should be oriented. So unfortunately, not much that I can do there. So I'm going to put this to a minus 90. So now our explosion starts where it should. But we don't actually see any particular fire or anything. We just, we're just seeing smoke. So this is where the material instance parameters come into play. Now let me just bring that out so we can actually use it. And you'll see in here we have the black body intensity multiplier and so on. So let's just crank this up to like uh, 10,000 and maybe the black body to maybe a thousand or something like that just to see if we get any particular effect. So now you're already seeing something there, but we have a few issues to address here. So the first thing, if the first issue to address is the fact that uh, we have way too much intensity for the smoke and not enough for the fire. 
So we're going to play around with these settings in the material and we're also going to get rid of this top bit here where you're seeing a bit of an error as the animation unfolds. And guys, do remember that if you do support the, if you want to support the, the, the platform, you can do so on Patreon where you get access to all of my projects that I have for sale. So just for one subscription, you basically get everything. And also you can go to my website, 3D Project Masters or my Unreal Engine uh, Marketplace and purchase any of my projects if you'd like to support the channel. But let's get back to the tutorial. So first things first, let's deal with the look and feel of the actual explosion. So the first thing, I'm going to stop it from actually playing. And I'm going to switch over to the frame that I want. Now you're noticing as I do this, the VDB goes blurry, which is not great. So in order for us to stop that, over here where it says parse volume texture streaming, just tick this button where it says issue blocking request. Once you do that, you'll see that this, bl this um, blurring is not happening anymore because it's now using extra resources to load the VDB fast from your hard drive. Okay, now we have it in stuck in this particular um, frame. Let's have a look. And first of all, if we turn down the intensity maybe of that smoke a little bit, maybe 0 0.3, maybe this is going to be a bit better. I'm also going to play around with the temperature. So the temperature isn't really going to help me a lot here. Um, no, it seems like it's maybe 2000 might be enough. Now, what happens when we play around with the black body? Because you can see it's kind of doing the same thing as a temperature, but a bit different. So let's just try maybe a value like that, right? Now, if I play the animation again, maybe just scrubbing it, this is what we're getting. This is how much of the effect we're getting here. Right, and now we can also go into the scattering color over here and particularly have a look to see what happens if we change the color. So, you know, like a blue or maybe maybe a darker blue. Maybe that's going to make it look a bit more interesting. So something like that. And as we play the animation, you can see there that the, the blue is seen, but that's seen onto the actual smoke itself. So if we turn this back to white, then the smoke will be there again as normal. So again, that's really more up to how you want to play with it okay now we could also um, you know play around with the uh, density of this smoke if we would like to but i wouldn't recommend going above a value of two i think a value of one is already pretty strong with value of two would probably be even you know be a bit too much so let me just uh, press the playing now again and this is how the effect unfolds uh, let's just take the point light away as well, just to take it a bit further and just see how the effect sort of plays out when we play like that, when it's a bit more in the in the dark. So that's what we're seeing there. I think we do need a bit more temperature, so maybe three uh, thirty thousand rather than uh, you know twenty thousand. Let's see what that does. Yeah, something like that. And now we want to get rid of this particular bit over here which is going to show us show up in our play mode for a lot of vdbs this is generally happening to a lot of vdbs where you have animation so you want to get rid of it and i'm going to show you a very nice neat tree a trick that i've kind of worked out myself and it's actually quite uh, easy to do and basically works so let me just show you what we're going to do effectively in the material in here let me just put this material instance away we need to add a custom code right after these masks in order to fix that problem. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to right click, create a custom code, right? And we're going to put the code in here. We're also going to look at this particular array element. So make sure that you name this as chord and you will see why this is important. You see, once we renamed it, it uh, then showed up in here as well. Now we're going to take this. Well, actually, we're going to add a saturate node. And we're going to put this saturate node between the divide here and the UVs, just like that. Now, from this saturate node, we do want to connect this to the coordinate right over here. Okay. Now, over over on the, after the masks, we're going to add another multiply node. We're going to take this chord and we're going to put into the. It doesn't matter the A or B values doesn't really matter. We're going to take the mask and put it in there, and this goes into the input. And we're going to do the same down here as well. Let me just drag it out a little bit like that. Okay, so this mask goes into the A value and this coordinate goes into the B value. Okay, and this connects over here. Now, we've done this, but we need a code in our custom code. So I have one to copy. Uh, let me just copy and then paste it. Just 
um, have a look at reading this code. Let me just make sure that it's all there. Um, don't think I've copied everything. So let me just copy again from my file. There we go. Right, so we're, what we're doing here, I'm a bit concerned whether or not this is displaying the full code. Uh, it doesn't seem like it is, unfortunately. So let me just over here, right after this F any coordinate, uh, you do want to press space over here. For some reason, the code is really acting up and I'm not sure. Shift enter to basically move this down the line. So something like that. Okay, so we need to do float multiplier equal one. If any coordinates smaller than 0 0.01, multiplier equals 0. If any coordinate above 0 0.99, multiplier 0, the return multiplier. And once this is done, in particularly this way, so hopefully you'll be able to see, I'm going to like make it bigger on the screen so you can see the code. And I'm also going to put the code in the description below, actually. I think that's going to be easier. And we're going to press enter to make sure this code is active. Once that's done, we're going to click apply and we're going to go back into our viewport. And you can see that bit is now gone. Okay, now let's just uh, play the VDB again. So we're going to select the VDB and make sure that we have our playing on. As you can see, there is no more problem. Okay, now you've probably noticed that this particular VDB isn't really shining any light into the scene or anything like that. And unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for future versions of Unreal for this to happen. As of 5.5, this is still not the case. So just bear in mind that is still a particular issue. Uh, you will, you know, they, obviously Epic will sort this out in the near future. But for now, you're just going to have to add your own sort of like, um, you know, scene lights in order to create that effect from this particular explosion with a VDB. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial and I hope you learned something today. It's quite easy to bring VDBs into Unreal Engine and it's quite easy to set them up if you know what you're doing. That particular snippet of code that I gave you is going to help you tremendously in other projects where you're using VDBs because I would definitely recommend dropping it everywhere just to eliminate any sort of slices of density or temperature that you see from the top, bottom, left and right of the volume box that contains the VDB. Anyway, uh, shout out to my Patreons. Really love you guys. I, I really do appreciate the support. I really do appreciate you guys coming back for more content. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Keep creating.